Tony Poulos here at TM Forum Live in Nice. It's a great time to catch up with some really great people from the industry and this time I have Lester Thomas who's the Chief Architect at Vodafone. Lester, great to catch up today. Thank you for spending time with me. You're here at TM Forum Live presenting on APIs and their role in NFV and SDN revenue streams. Tell me a little more about that. So, um, SDN and NFV really hot topics at the moment. But the big question is, how do we as an industry really drive new revenue streams from SDN and NFV? And what we're doing in Vodafone as part of what we're calling our ocean transformation, Vodafone Ocean, is we're looking to say, how do we uh, increment, incrementally implement these sort of SDN and NFV technologies, but at the same time we're building towards the future? And there's three levels that we're, we're building. The first level is to say, we are just virtualizing all of our infrastructure services that we have. Right. Yeah, which really will drive a cost reduction, and it'll drive a, you know, a reliability and resilience you get from some of these cloud systems. It doesn't in itself drive revenues. Yeah. The next level is we're building customer systems based on SDNFE, which again is gonna drive new, reven uh, new customer experiences. But again, these are the existing customers yeah. Yeah. And so we can't really drive more revenues from existing customers. We will do it to remain competitive and to actually optimize the customer experience. But the real thing we're looking for is how do you drive genuinely new services? So how can I drive new services into things like uh, smart cities, uh, smart health, you know, smart energy, these sorts of industry verticals where they need the sorts of network services we can offer. How do you do this in, a, in a, uh, you know, an API-enabled way more akin to like a hypermedia type company. Well, that brings me to the point that you will be uh, rolling out uh, NFE and SDN at a particular pace. It may not be what others, and particularly partners, are able to keep yeah. up with. Is it the APIs that will be the, the means for everyone to keep in touch with each other in partnerships? Yeah, we believe, like, we're, we're building systems now. We have been for the last couple of years been doing real implementations with millions of customers using them without realizing they're using them. Right. Yeah. But we're building these, and the foundations is, is saying you can build some services, and because you make them API enabled, then the next level of services on top can almost um, automatically and seamlessly use your underlying infrastructure services. And we're doing that at multiple levels, and all of them based on TM Forum open APIs. And I presume your uh, suppliers, your vendor community, or your partners are also having to comply and follow those uh, same rules? Well, this is the big thing. So, TM Forum today, we've announced that a whole lot of our competitors and Vodafone have agreed to adopt the TM Forum Open APIs. Yes. And we're doing this to say to, to all of the vendors, you need to, it's best for our industry if you make sure your products and services automatically and seamlessly implement these APIs, then when we consume them, we can integrate them very, very quickly. Yes. So time to market advantages, building ecosystems. So as an industry, we will drive these new revenue streams, but only if all of the, the operators and all of the vendors adopt the same open standards for APIs. So presumably you're looking at new content all the time and new products and services that will come from third parties. Yeah. Are you going to be a conduit for those as well and start selling multiple third party products? Yeah. One of the key purposes of APIs is it makes this much more of an open ecosystem. And in fact, we've got a catalyst here in TM Forum where we're demonstrating how a developer, and this might be an individual developer or a starter company, who, who, that's where the real innovation is going to come from, how a developer can come to a big operator like Vodafone, see the APIs available, order access to the APIs, build really innovative products, and actually then we will help them take it to market. So we will run a marketplace and have a sort of a revenue share model with that developer of offering services to our customers. And, but the, the real innovation comes from uh, startup companies, yeah. but we provide the sort of the mass scale, the capacity, the end-to-end -end sort of service operations that you get from a big, from a big, big telco. Do you ever see the point where uh, APIs themselves might be revenue, uh, revenue generators themselves? So we don't believe that that will be the key uh, driver of revenue. Like most of the APIs we will offer for free to developers just in order so that the services they create are better and, and, and operate absolutely seamlessly with our network. There will be some APIs that you'll monetize. So you can imagine some, if we're given analytics as a service to a developer. Good example. But effectively they're, you know, they're buying the data 
per transaction through an API. Yeah. So some some APIs you will charge for. I think the majority will will have them access the APIs. They'll be throttling in control. But I don't think that will be the main source of revenue. It'll be a revenue share from the actual service they create using the APIs. Well, it sounds like a big breakthrough to have an open API, open API uh, platform adopted by a number of operators. That's a big breakthrough for the industry. And let's hope it uh, continues on. Thanks for your help with that. And thanks for your time today. Thanks. No, I think the, op the open API uh, manifesto we've all signed up to date, to me it's a real breakthrough in the industry and I think it will help the industry drive into these new revenue areas. Great. Well, thanks for being with me today and explaining that. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, Lester. Thank you.